students that is going to school here, it's surprising to me how many students will say that they believe in conversion therapy or that they want to practice it. And it just, it's baffling to me. Because I think what's happening is people think they know what that means. All right, so it's 1989 and I'm 17 years old. I come out of the closet and two weeks later, my parents find, found out, find out. Uh, my father comes to me and he uh, confronts me with it. Uh, we exchange some words and uh, they decide that the best thing is for me to see a therapist through the church. Uh, we're Catholic and so um, I'm talking to the therapist in this conversion therapy, and uh, two days into it, I uh, make a decision that this is not working for me. So I go back home, I drop out of high school, and uh, 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 leave my home, and uh, I go to San Francisco and hang out on the streets for a little bit. Uh, the next few years are very confusing for me. I have no idea what's going on. So it takes me a, a few years to figure out what, what mm -hmm. is going on with me, what's wrong with me, why is this mm -hmm. happening? And then I eventually go back to school and uh, 15 years later, uh, I'm here at Mental Health America as uh, an outreach for the LGBT community. So that's what I do now is I go out in the community and um, we produce a Youth Empowerment Summit for LGBT youth. It's all about uh, empowering youth and building self-confidence. Uh, also, uh, True Colors uh, Center, which is for uh, LGBT youth, elders, and people of color. So what is conversion therapy? Uh, another word for it is reparative therapy, or gay, con mm -hmm. you know, gay conversion therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, um, where, why that came about and why that was even created is uh, before 1973, the American Psychological Association um, classified homosexuality as a mental illness, and so there was a psychotherapist who came up with the curriculum on how to cure um, homosexuals. And so, um, in how it, some of the ways that they do that is through electric shock therapy. So you watch, so for example, you watch, uh, you know, homoerotic images, and so when you get aroused, you get electrocuted. That's one way. Uh, the other way is through. Um, there's many different types, but um, and there's, but uh, as you can see, it's it's pretty severe and drastic, and it's not uh, it doesn't work. And so the and it's still out there, but the American Psychological Association has come out and said it doesn't it doesn't work, and actually it leads to depression, and it leads to um, suicide. It can lead to suicide. And so uh, that's really why it doesn't work. But so what I want to do is show you a video. So the, there was a psychotherapist who, the guy that invented it, he or uh, they created the curriculum for it for conversion therapy. Um, you know, he finally came out and said his statement. But ironically, his son is gay, and so I'm going to show you just a short video, five minutes on what the son had to say about that. I'm Richard Sacrides. My father was, his name was Charles Socrates, MD. He was, you know, the founder or one of the founders of the, of the school of psychiatry that believed that homosexuality was a mental illness and that it could be cured through psychotherapy. And he was a New York psychiatrist, quite well known, uh, had a, you know, thriving practice, wrote in uh, 1967, maybe 68, one of the early uh, psychoanalytic treatises on the issue of homosexuality called the overt homosexual, which I do believe, as I recall, was dedicated to me and my sister. So it was with this background that he became quite famous. CBS News did a very uh, now well-known, uh, uh, like 60 Minutes type special called The Homosexual, in which they filmed him in his class that he taught at Albert Einstein Medical College on the treatment of homosexuality. Homosexuality is, in fact, a mental illness which has reached epidemiological proportions. I don't look so much like the old him, but 
Yeah, if you look at that film a little bit, you can kind of see the family resemblance. It's kind of great. Kind of a little scary. My parents were divorced when I was six, six though, and he moved out, and I first lived with my mom. And, um, and I missed him a great deal. So when I was about 13, uh, I moved back in with my dad. And we lived on the Upper East Side on 78th Street in a townhouse, and his office was downstairs. So there was this, uh, uh, you know, on, kind of on one level, there was this kid coming out. On the top level, there was one, this kid coming out. And on the bottom level, there were these people who were going to be cured of their homosexuality. He just does this. It, you get to the other side of it, and it's great, right? You know, everybody who does this, you come out to your parent, and you know, even if the parent is like a little weird at the beginning, they realize that their relationship with their own flesh and blood, with their offspring, is like more important than this thing, and they get over it. And that, I think, is like a good rule for everybody. Um, and, but I was suspicious. I said, like, you know, mm, I might be the exception to this rule. But finally, one day, um, uh, I made arrangements to come see him in the middle, this was the middle of the work day, uh, uh, to see him at his office. I sat down and I said, Dad, you know, I think this is you know something we've known for a long time together, but I'm gay, and uh, you know we have to find a way to uh, be more honest with each other about this. And he, he he had a tendency for the dramatic. He was angry, but he certainly wasn't surprised and angry. And he was like kind of a little surprised. So I kind of said, I'm going to give you some time to think about it, to take this in. And uh, and I left. It did not. This, it did not last a long time, and it did not have a good ending at that moment. Um, and and I just let it sit for a while. A relatively short interval of a couple of months in which we didn't speak to each other passed, and then he sent me a letter. And he sent me a beautiful letter, uh, handwritten, four pages, in which he basically said, uh, "I'm sorry I behaved so badly." Uh, I'm sorry I got angry. You're the most important person to me in my life, and uh, uh, I love you, and the only thing that's important to me is your happiness. If this is what makes you happy, I want to support you, and we'll just figure out a way to manage it. Now, that was a great moment, you know, the letter was a great moment. Um, you know, it was not always that easy going forward because he did not, you know, he did not change what he was saying publicly about the treatment and cure of homosexuality. When people um, uh, asked me about my dad, is, uh, right, what, what was the first thing they said is that, you know, did he ever try to cure you? And it's like an obvious question. Um, uh, and the answer is no. I mean, it, just, it literally never came up. He never once said to me, uh, you know, I have an idea, I have this theory, and we can get you some help with this. You know, it's quite sad because we, as you know, as a kid, I had a relationship with him that was terrific. There's a lot of warmth and affection between the two of us, and uh, and we were never really able to, well, we never came close to rebuilding that. But we had a relationship that was, you know, based on honesty, authenticity, integrity, uh, at least, uh, you know, coming from me. <laughs> Uh, so it was much better. You know, my story is, is, you know, is no harder nor easier than anybody else's. It's just, you know, just my story. It is a little stranger than most, uh, and it's kind of like a, kind of like a wow, you know. It's, it's uh, so you know, it's like just part of who I am. So really the message I want, uh, the takeaway message really is my parents, they, they wanted the best for me. And I think that's where conversion therapy comes. It's like, okay, you know your kid's gonna have, to, gonna go through a lot of trouble in life. So hey, why don't we just fix it? And um, it really comes from a, a good intention, but you know what they say about good intentions, right? So it's really, it, that's where it comes from, but what we have to realize is that it, it just really doesn't work and it leads to depression and uh, possible suicide and a lot of confusion and, you know, I, I didn't get to go to college for a long time because I had to deal with a lot of stuff, so my development was severely delayed. And, um, you know, that, that's a pretty common thing, but 
So that's really the, the, the message. And then also I'd like to leave uh, my business card. I'll pass it along. Uh, I want to invite you to our Youth Empowerment Summit. It'll be October 5th. Um, we had our first ever last year at uh, Mission Gathering Church in North Park. Uh, we had uh, 75, 13 to 18 year olds. So this year it's going to be at SDSU. It'll be a, um, a college track also and a parents track. And it'll be all uh, about empowerment, confidence building. SDG and e has sponsored it. So they are going to also have a, a job in interviewing skills for young people. So it's a really great. And also uh, my part is a, there's going to be a free meditation workshop. So if you'd like to learn how to meditate from a very great uh, Jeff Slotnick. He um, is on TED.com. I invite you to that and um, 